I am an American citizen working for the British government. I came all the way to Bangladesh to ensure that my brother gets justice for his wrongful and negligent killing. My brother, Muhannad Yusuf al-Hindi, was a happy, positive, and presumed to be healthy, healthy 60 years old pilot. He was a very positive person. Everybody loved him and everybody loved being around him. He loved his family and he loved his job. He would get routine regular health checks for the purposes of his work as a pilot. He was a veteran. Our Agamemnon Porter. Would it be possible for you to move any closer to the mic? I have long legs. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. okay. He was a veteran pilot for Gulf Air who carried out his job with great care and skill to ensure the safety of his passengers and his colleagues. It breaks my heart to say that my brother was a victim of medical, medical negligence and manslaughter here in Bangladesh, as he thought so highly of this country and the kindness of your people. The tragic and fatal incident took place on 14th December 2022. Here is the exact timeline of the day of the incident. He was staying at Meridian Hotel in Dhaka, where most pilots and airlines stay in Bangladesh. Before his early morning Gulf Air flight, where he would be the main captain of the flight. He woke up at 2.45 a.m. to get ready for his flight and left for Hazrat Airport. He arrived at Hazrat Airport at around 3.30 and at that time, the World Cup was happening, and he was a big fan of Messi, and he was walking to the immigration, talking to his co-pilot about Messi, and he was happy. While he was going through immigration, around 4 a.m., he collapsed and was found to be unresponsive. At around 4.20 a.m., in at the airport, my brother had his first cardiac arrest. At this point, the staff and people at the airport, they received, he received five minutes of CPR. His blood pressure was going down. Therefore, after, he was transported to United Hospital. Between 4.30 a.m. to 5.30 a.m., he was still in transport, carrying him to the hospital from the airport. He arrived at the emergency room of United Hospital around 5.30 a.m. and he did not receive any treatment at the emergency room of United Hospital. Between 4.30, at around 5.45 a.m., he was moved from the emergency room to the CCM unit of United Hospital, which I think is the ICU and in the hospital. Around 6.25 a.m., he had his second cardiac arrest, and again, CPR was given for 10 minutes. After carrying out return of spontaneous ROSC and ECG showed that segment's elevation. Around 6.45, he had his third cardiac arrest. So by now, he had three cardiac arrests 
in the hospital. Sorry about that. At around 6.45 a.m., he had his third cardiac arrest and CPR was given for 15 minutes with ROSC. Around 7 a.m., immediate ECHO was carried out on my brother and cardiology opinion was taken. Around 9 a.m., the cardiologist consultation was for the first time taken and my brother, Frank, who was the first officer, the co-pilot with him, who did not leave his side, became a privy of information that he will need PCI procedure and it's necessary due to the, to the critical state of my brother. He consented as a second consent was required, but the Gulf Air personnel who was present there at that time knew that that procedure was very risky. Since the process was risky, the hospital was required to get Gulf Air's consent, which they failed to do so, and instead they called our family trying to get another consent from my brother not giving him the full information, is speaking with poor English that we did not really understand what he was saying, and undermining the massive risk that this procedure would produce. And during the call, where they thought for consent for PCIs, surgery to check for, for heart blocks, they said it's normal, standard procedure, downplaying the risk involved as my brother was on ventilator and suffered a three cardiac arrests already. Around 10.30, my brother was transferred to the cath lab for PCI intervention. Upon catch inspection, they claim they found the left main artery was 99% blocked. Around 11.15, my brother had his fourth and final cardiac arrest during the procedure. He was given 45 minutes of CPR and temporary pace, uh, pacemaker was inserted and my brother took his final breath at 12.08 p.m. He was sedated during the procedure. Upon making an inquiry at the said hospital, United Hospital, I was informed that Dr. Kaiser Nasir did the procedure, but his name was not to be found in any of the patient files provided to Gulf Air and provided to my family. The report stated that my brother had asthma, when in fact he did not have asthma. When in inquired about this, they said it was mistakenly left out. I also suspect that a cardiologist was consulted over the phone. There was no cardiologist at the emergency room, neither there was a cardiologist before 9 a.m. Only was never present in person to see my brother. My brother was buried 48 hours after his death left here in Dhaka alone without any of us being around him to, to see, to be with him for his last moments. I believe that between 4 a.m. and 12 noon, which is eight hours, the hospital could have saved my brother, which they failed to. This is the report from the summary from the hospital. Now, what I think really happened. There's few issues here. Issue number one, my brother negligence of the ER staff and absence of cardiologist. When someone comes in an ambulance after being told that he had a heart attack or cardiologist, 
within minutes, they should have prepared him for the catch and for the intervention. Yet, my brother was moved from the emergency room to the CCM unit, to the ICU, and then for a CT scan and another few tests here and there, wasting time because there was no cardiologist. <coughs> Issue one, negligence of ER staff and absence of cardiologist. My brother suffered the first cardiac arrest at the airport 4.20 a.m and arrived in the emergency room of United Hospital. According to their website, they have the best cardiologist in Bangladesh. Over an hour later at 5.30, he had his second heart uh, attack. ERs are known to be a special area in a hospital that is staffed and equipped for their for receiving and treating of any person requiring immediate medical care. If he is in the ER, why did you need to move him without doing any procedure in the ER? At the same, as the name suggests, emergency room. They function and their expertise are in the area of responding to emergencies. You go to an emergency room and then you go to an ICU, to anywhere else. Your emergency room is your start point. It was known to the ER that my brother had suffered a cardiac arrest already, well over an hour ago, and that he was in a critical state with his blood pressure dropping lower. It was necessary and reasonably expected that the staff at the ER would exercise their professional skills and knowledge and alert at least one cardiologist so that they could give this critical patient the medical care, immediate surgery if he needed. However, the staff at the ER failed to inform any cardiologist and lied to me personally. Oh no, there was someone at the, what's the name? No name. However, the staff failed to inform any cardiologist and at that point was no heart specialist present at the ER. The ER staff did not take any steps to treat my brother. At this point, there was more than enough time for the hospital to provide my brother with the treatment or the catch or any, anything to help him stay alive. That could have saved his life, but they failed to do so. Without any cardiologist's input on the matter, within 15 minutes at 5.45, my brother was transferred to the CCM unit by the ER staff. So he did not receive any treatment in the emergency room and they removed him, moved him to another ICE unit. Thus, even though hour and 25 minutes passed, by, since my brother suffered his first cardiac arrest, the ER failed to one, take any proper, any proper medical measures to revive my brother, two, alert any cardiologist of his hospital to advise on the case, three, require his medical re records from Gulf Air, which should have been by now sent to the hospital by Gulf Air station manager, and it was not. Now, issue two, negligence of CCM staff and absence of cardiologists. My brother was shifted to the CCM unit at 5.45 a.m. One would expect that at the very least, one cardiologist would be available to oversee my brother's case since he was a heart patient at the hospital. However, there was not a single cardiologist present. And they lied to me, they said there was, but there wasn't. I suspect it, might, it, might, it may have been the case that since it was night time, the cardiologist took off and entrusted the junior and inexperienced doctor slash staff to cater to his case. This in itself is negligence. 
because there was no competent medical professional cardiologist present to advise on my brother's case 40 minutes after being shifted between rooms to the specialized heart care CCM around 6.25 a.m. my brother had his second uh, cardiac heart attack, cardiac arrest. The inexperienced doctors present at that time gave my brother a 10 minute long CPR. In less than an hour of arriving at the hospital, my brother suffered yet another heart attack. Rendering him a vulnerable patient requiring urgent and immediate specialist care, the negligent and incompetent medical staff who witnessed my brother suffer a second heart attack would have but failed to contact a heart specialist surgeon then for the purpose of preparing for a stent or artery cleaning procedure. 20 minutes after his second heart attack, at 6.45, my brother suffered a third heart attack, a little over two hours after being in the hospital, and my brother suffered three cardiac arrests already. The unit specializes in cardiac issues and is part one of the most popular hospitals in Dhaka as they promote themselves, but again, there was no steps taken, neither medically or ethically, to inform a cardiologist. This amount to cheer and gross negligence on the part of the CCM staff, ER staff, and Gulf Air. The only step taken by them was giving, giving my brother CPR for 15 minutes with ROSC. After that, my brother who suffered three heart attacks already, by then was left without any medical care for two hours and 15 minutes till 9 a.m. when supposedly a cardiologist started their duty at the hospital for the day. Days after my brother's death, when I made an inquiry at the hospital to why no steps were taken during his long period over two hours, they stated that their protocol is to start CPR and thereafter opt for other measures such as a neogram, meaning they followed procedures as a staff, not by a cardiologist advice because there was no cardiologist. They stated that since he was not in a stable condition, People do not go to emergency room if they are in stable condition. And required high doses of some particular medication, he was given three as opposed to one, to keep his condition under control at that time. They could not perform an oilgram, which is not true. That procedure should have been done at 7 a.m. in the emergency room. 7 a.m not 11 a.m., 7 a.m. There were two staff members present at the time of the inquiry, and when asked who were attending my brother during those two hours, the female staff member said a junior consultant was present, and the male staff member quickly and suspiciously corrected her, and they started speaking in a language I didn't understand. It's clear from the this, this <laughs> it's okay. There is contradiction in their versions of the story. Me myself, I heard three versions of the story, and it, three of them were lies. There, there was no cardiologist present, and rather inexperienced junior consultant was attending to a patient that. They were not qualified to handle, and there are conscious and deliberate efforts being made to manipulate the records to pile up the hospital bill since he's a pilot in Gulf Air. They, on, they only provided us with a medical test report, 
we received a report from the hospital with his grave, with his coffin when he came back. Not one page states a cardiologist name or any doctor name except a gynecologist, a woman doctor, and then another ICU unit consultant. No names for cardiologists. No part of the medical test report provided to me contained the name of cardiologist on duty and I'm, and I'm now being refused access to the main patient file. When I first requested for it, they said it would be provided with it and simply asked me to wait and come back later. Three days I went to the hospital trying to get the report. And when someone is deceased, the report goes to archive, it does not go to a doctor. I was refused to get a copy of his report. When I first requested, they said it would be provided with it and simply asked me to wait, come back later. When I became agitated and angry in the hospital and threatened to take legal action or involve member of the embassy, they agreed to provide it to me initially, but later they claimed that my niece signed for his release of body and I am no one, and I am no one to be accessing any of his reports. I could not gain access to it. That meant no logic for me. At no point did they ask me to present ID, except at the end, and then they said, you cannot get any reports after making me come to the hospital three days with promises of CCTV and reports. It cannot be confidential hospital property as he is deceased and it is our, it, we have the right to have those reports. The third issue is the incompetent and in, in, incompetent consultation by cardiologists. Firstly, at around 7 a.m., it is alleged by the hospital that an echo was done and that cardiology opinions were taken. Opinion were taken. It's unclear wh whether the cardiologist was present or wasn't, how he gave his opinion and what his exact diagnosis was. This alleged cardiologist, whose identity was not disclosed to us, neither in, in anywhere in the report, uh, opted for the conservative management treatment for the time being as stated at the report, when it's clear to even a non-medical professional that a surgery or a procedure would be needed as soon as he came to the emergency room after being diagnosed with a heart attack. The doctor gave my brother a heparin sodium 5000 injection used to prevent blood clots after making the decision regarding conservative management treatment. 